This vastly improved version of Kia's second generation Sorento is efficient, smart and more spacious for families seeking practical seven seat all wheel drive transport. More interesting than an MPV and roomier than a CRV or RAV4 style soft roader, you can see why it might appeal. This spacious family sized SUV is the second generation Kia Sorento, or is it? The car we have here, though appearing quite similar to the Mark II model that first appeared on our roads in 2010, is actually quite different when it comes to a lot of the bits that matter. The chassis, the suspension and the upper structure. The engine wear is more efficient too. Most mid-term model updates are more about style than substance, but when this improved Sorento first appeared in Kia showrooms at the very end of 2012, it was clear that in this case, quite the opposite was true. The reason why Kia saw fit to so fundamentally update this design after such a short time on sale is actually quite simple. The company shares all its technology with sister brand Hyundai, whose own family-sized SUV, the Santa Fe, was relaunched in third-generation form in mid-2012. Economies of scale being what they are, it made sense for that model's more up-to-date engineering to be transferred into this Sorento. So much for product semantics. What about the car itself? Well, like the Santa Fe, it's one of the few affordable family SUVs you can buy that offer seven seats and so represent a more adventurous option for those who don't want to get stuck with a people carrier. What it isn't is the kind of serious off-roader the original post-2003 first generation model tried to be with its rugged separate chassis and low range gearbox. Instead, the original second generation Sorento was sent to finishing school, gaining a sleeker, more car-like, Californian-styled monocoque body, super smooth, high-range only transmissions, and fancy multi-link rear suspension, more suited to Surbiton than Snowden. As I've said, all these things have been significantly refined in this much improved model. And while those familiar with the Amalfi Coast might still feel the Sorento to be lacking an R, a glance at the spec sheet doesn't immediately suggest it to be lacking much else. Let's put this car to the test. Kia talks of the major changes made to the driving dynamics of this car. The much stiffer body, the upgraded suspension, the adoption of electric power steering and the sharper brakes. It all doubtless makes a difference, but not enough of one for this car to be classed as an especially rewarding steer. Sister brand Hyundai uses all the same ingredients to slightly better effect with their rival Santa Fe model, but then that's partly because they've taken the trouble to fine tune everything to the specific challenges of British roads. Kia didn't think that was necessary here, and perhaps they're right. Customers in this segment are generally looking for a robust, comfortable and refined driving experience rather than a memorable one. Quality is certainly perfected in this improved Sorento. So the ride's pretty composed on all but the worst surfaces thanks to sophisticated multi-link suspension and you sit high up and firmly in charge despite the 10 mm reduction in ride height. Perhaps most impressive of all is the relative silence at speed thanks to extra sound insulation, improved door ceiling, thick side window glass and a sleeker shape. It all makes this car a pleasant long journeying companion. Twisting country roads are predictably less of a natural habitat, despite the addition of high performance dampers. Though the Torta chassis does its level best to resist body roll at normal cornering speeds. But then there's no real incentive to start throwing this car around. The slightly vague power steering doesn't encourage it, and the flex steer system that top models get to vary its level of assistance doesn't really help matters much. Better then to relax and waft happily along on the wave of torque delivered by the 194 brake horsepower 2.2 litre CRDI diesel engine, the only unit on offer to British Sorento buyers. 
There's certainly plenty of pulling power with 422 newton meters in this six speed manual model, enough to tow a brake trailer of up to 2,500 kilograms, an important factor for many potential buyers. Choose the optional six speed automatic, and for some reason, uh, that figure falls to 2,000 kilograms, despite the fact that pulling power actually rises to 436 newton meters. However, you choose to swap cogs, you'll find that rest to 62 miles an hour will occupy around nine and a half seconds on the way to an academic maximum of 118 miles an hour. And off-road ability? Well, though all versions of this Sorento get the company's intelligent all-wheel drive system, they won't typically be using it very often. Like most SUVs in this segment, this one uses a setup that channels all the power to the front wheels in ordinary driving until a loss of traction prompts a percentage of torque to be transferred rearwards, which will be all you'll need to keep mobile in the next snowy snap or to take on the nearest forest trail. Those brave or unwise enough to want to do a bit more than that will be reassured by the provision of a manually selectable lock mode, the switch down here, that splits torque 50-50 front to rear to ease you through particularly slippery situations. The modest 185 millimeters of uh, ground clearance means these shouldn't be too extreme, but he'll start assist control and an acceptable 19.5 seven degree approach angle should get you up reasonably steep slopes while there's a 22.4 degree departure angle to help when you get to the bottom at the other side. Sleeker and lower this improved second generation Sorento may be but its overall look hasn't changed very much. Still smartly practical rather than fashionably trendy, but as before, certainly more golf club than Jim Gymkhana. The trademark tiger nose front grille remains, but now blends seamlessly into projection type headlamps and LED daytime running lights. Follow the rising upper belt line and rugged lower character creases to the rear and you'll find a redesigned tailgate and bumper with smarter lamps, all aimed at creating a higher tech and wider looking appearance. The important stuff though lies beyond the aesthetics, courtesy of a redesigned platform able to increase cabin space without affecting exterior dimensions that remain as before, with the car just under 4.7 metres in length and nearly 1.9 metres wide. Quite big enough for most British buyers. But not large enough to offer third seating row travelling room the equal of the large MPVs this Sorento's priced against. Not that this will be a deal breaker for most families, the majority of whom will only be using these rearmost chairs for children. Kids who will be quite comfortable at the back of this Sorento with their own cup holders and ventilation, particularly now that this car's redesigned platform has freed up an extra nine millimetres of legroom. That's a marginal improvement, but those in the middle row really will feel the benefit of this improved model's extra space thanks to an extra 30 millimetres of legroom. Now once in place, there's comfortable room for two adults and on short to medium length journeys, reasonable space for three. Unfortunately, these seats don't slide backwards and forwards to enable you to trade legroom with those behind you, but they do recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. And at the wheel, well, though the emphasis remains on sturdy practicality, Kia has tried to offer up a more premium feel here with a sweeping dashboard design, greater use of soft touch materials, chrome highlights, and a redesigned centre console that on most models houses this 4.2 inch colour LCD touchscreen. As before, the driving position is commanding with a height adjustable driver's seat and reach and rake adjustable steering, uh, so it's easy to get comfortable. Ahead of you sit white backlit chrome ringed instruments presented in Kia's trademark overlapping so-called three-cylinder layout. And practicality? Well, there's this large centre console box, 
twin cup holders, uh, a large glove box, and four decently sized door pockets. Out back, a lower sill and a high lifting tailgate make it easier to load and unload, though inevitably you won't have space for very much if all three seating rows are in place. A scenario that'll leave you with just 116 litres to play with, though you do get this useful underfloor compartment. Fold the two rearmost chairs into the floor though, and the figure rises to 515 litres. And if you go further and drop the 60-40 split folding second row backrests, then the capacity rises to a very decent 1,530 litres. Expect to pay somewhere between 27 and 35,000 pounds for your Sorento, which is pretty much par for the course for a large, practical, diesel-powered seven-seat SUV these days. Unlike sister company Hyundai, Kia makes the selection process simple for Sorento folk. So there are no two-wheel drive or five-seat options, just the choice of trim levels and manual or automatic transmission. Go for the auto box and there's a £1,500 premium to pay. And arrivals? Well, I'm going to assume two things here. First, that you're not prepared to stretch upwards towards £40,000. That's the kind of sum you'd need for a decently specified seven-seat Land Rover Discovery or Toyota Land Cruiser. And second, that you actually want proper off-road capability and seven seats, which counts out five-seat soft roaders like Honda's CRV and Toyota's RAV4, cars that actually won't save you very much uh, over this far larger and more practical Kia. That leaves you with only three main alternatives to this car, and all have drawbacks. Let's start with this Sorento sister model, the Hyundai Santa Fe. It shares the same engine and basic platform used here, but in its cheapest seven-seat all-wheel drive form costs nearly £2,000 more. The Santa Fe is an appealing car, but that's a big chunk extra to find. Next up is Chevrolet's Captiva, a car that in basic seven-seat diesel form costs virtually the same money as the comparable version of this Kia, but is a much older design based on underpinnings dating back to 2007 which is one of the reasons why it's about 10% thirstier and dirtier. A much more recently introduced alternative is the third generation version of Mitsubishi's Outlander. Again, in its least expensive seven seat guys, uh, priced very similarly to this Sorento, but uh, for that money offering you about 25% less power, 147 brake horsepower, as opposed to the 194 brake horsepower that you get here. And that really makes a difference when you're trying to haul along a car as bulky as this one. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a Sorento that you really want, then with Kia's value-based market stance in mind, you're going to be expecting a decent level of standard equipment for your money. And, by and large, you shouldn't be disappointed. As well as the all-wheel drive system and seven-seat capability that I mentioned earlier on, which, bear in mind, apparently cheaper base versions of some rivals don't get, all models feature LED daytime running lights, cornering lamps that better illuminate the bends, auto headlights, front fog lights, reverse parking sensors, tinted glass, alloy wheels, roof rails, power folding mirrors, a decent quality six speaker stereo with steering wheel controls plus USB and AUX ports, a trip computer, a leather trim steering wheel, Bluetooth phone capability, cruise control, hill start assist to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and dual zone automatic climate control with rear air ventilation so all seven occupants can fine tune the temperature in their area of the cabin. You've to stretch to a mid-spec model like this one to get self-leveling suspension, the dash-mounted 4.2-inch LCD color touchscreen with its integrated reverse parking camera, as well as niceties like leather upholstery, heated front seats and rain-sensing wipers. There's also the option at this level of satellite navigation. Safety-wise, this car was awarded a five-star rating in NCAP tests, and you can see why. 
as well as twin front, side and curtain airbags, anti-whiplash head restraints, a pedestrian-friendly active bonnet and Isofix child seat fastenings, expect to find ESC electronic stability control and VSM vehicle stability management. The latter feature helping if, for example, you're in a situation where one side of the car has more grip than the other, say when you're driving near a grass verge. Plus, the anti-lock brakes have a brake assist function to help in emergency stops that will be advertised to following motorists by an emergency stop signalling function that flashes the rear lights when you slam on the anchors. Running costs have improved by about 14% in comparison to those of the original second generation version of this car. Something that Kia's engineers put down to a revised exhaust gas circulation system, a sleeker shape and the introduction of MDPS electric power steering to replace the old hydraulic system. It also helps that the all-wheel drive system is one of those that functions in two-wheel drive most of the time until a lack of grip brings the rear wheels into play. As a result, despite the hefty two-ton curb weight and the absence of an engine stop-start system, uh, manual versions of the Soul 194 brake horsepower 2.2-litre CRDI diesel uh, that's the only engine on offer. Uh, those can achieve 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out 155 grams per kilometer of CO2 with a gear shift indicator on the dash to help owners get close to those figures day to day. Now that's a tad better than the same engine achieves in an equivalent high-end Santa Fe and a useful improvement over the figures boasted by a rival Chevrolet Captiva 2.2 VCDI. Uh, the Chevy gets 44.1 miles to the gallon and 170 grams per kilometre. In fact, in this segment, only a rival Mitsubishi Outlander can do better than this Kia in this respect. But that's because it offers you 25% less power beneath the bonnet. Go for a Sorento with six-speed automatic transmission and your returns will inevitably be hit, but not by as much as you might fear. Thanks to an active eco feature that adjusts the operation of the engine and transmission to promote maximum fuel economy, this variant returns 42.2 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 175 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's enough to move this version up a tax bracket from the manual model. Used values will continue to be propped up by Kia's excellent warranty arrangement, given that unlike programs such as Vauxhall's lifetime warranty, it's fully transferable to second owners. It's worth pointing out, though, that the trumpeted seven-year, 100,000-mile package actually covers the engine and gearbox. It's 100,000 miles and five years for everything else. Nevertheless, this promise of trouble-free motoring will be enough to tip the balance for many potential customers. Insurance groupings are also reasonable. The worst you'll get is Group 25, and most models are rated at Group 21. This based upon a low cost of repair and excellent excellent safety provision. Servicing intervals are every 20,000 miles or 12 months, whichever comes sooner. And you can keep maintenance costs down by opting for either of Kia's Care 3 all-inclusive servicing packages that provide inflation-proof servicing costs for the first three or five years of the vehicle's life. Kia calls this a crossover utility vehicle which I think is supposed to tell us that it's more than a cash car like crossover, but less than a fully fledged off-roading SUV. Exactly, in other words, the kind of compromise many modern families are looking for, complete with the seven seat practicality that lots of them will need. It's not a unique proposition, of course, Mitsubishi, Chevrolet and Kia's own sister brand Hyundai can all field similar products. Hence the need for the revisions made to keep this second generation Sorento cutting edge and current. The result is a blend of space, efficiency and value for money that the current opposition struggles to match. So, though this car might not be the trendiest choice you could make in this segment, it's an honest, robust and practical thing you'd find easy to live with and satisfying to own. All the things, in other words, you'd expect 
a Kia to be.